How did you become interested in gerontology? Uh, by way of a job offer that I had no idea how to even spell the word geriatrics or gerontology. Um, Colle uh, one of my mentors actually got a grant and was looking for someone uh, to come in and uh, run the grant and knew I was organized and said, I have to work with all of these disciplines and I need somebody to do this for me. And I said, what is gerontology? What is geriatrics? And that's how I got involved. <laughs> What was the uh, nature of the grant? It was Are on a geriatric education center, so infusing geriatrics into the curriculum for medical schools, okay. uh, dental, uh, nursing, social work, across the discipline. Describe your career trajectory as a gerontologist. At what point in your career did you embrace gerontologists to describe yourself? My job has required me to promote myself in the field because if I'm not the role model, who's going to be? If I want somebody to change, I need to change myself. Mm -hmm. And so I learned along with the people that I was looking at to train to be uh, in geriatrics and gerontology. Did you have female mentors who impacted you, your move into gerontology? Across the board at different phases, yes, I have had uh, women who have influenced uh, where I am today and what I'm doing. What was that like for you? It was awesome to have women role models for me and I try to do the same for younger women today. Can you tell me specifically who some of those women are? Well, my life, I think Nina Silverstein has been one of the people I've looked up to. Uh, Janet Frank, uh, Judith Sugar, um, a lot of the Augie women presidents have been there for me and have supported me and encouraged me. Are there any other ways that they have encouraged you or supported you? Or I think when I need career advice, I go to my women colleague friends. Uh, whether they are at Augie or at my own academic institution, I've always tried to get uh, affirmations from my colleagues out there. What is unique about being a woman gerontologist? I think uh, being in gerontology, you go across different disciplines. So you're able to uh, adapt and find a niche for yourself. Um, in my career, I had Marie Bernard, who was a physician in Oklahoma at the time, and I connected with her and got to know more about geriatrics from a woman physician who's from a minority group, uh, not necessarily from my group, but they were, uh, is a minority, and I thought, hey, she can get up there, and she's a physician, and she has to deal with male colleagues who, in, in medicine, it's, it's a, a climb to get there past them. So that was my way of saying, if she can do it, I can do it. How has being a gerontologist interacted with your own personal, personal aging process? Um, more in terms of caregiving than anything else. Um, I just lost my dad at the age of 89 uh, in December and my dad uh, was my role model as far as aging goes. He's, he was 15 years on dialysis. It's not very common and so I was a long distance caregiver for him and that helped me to uh, put into practice what I have learned through the years in the field. And it, it, it is interesting to see how, what we learn and how we have to adapt to it. Is society supporting what we're trying to teach our, uh, in school or promote in with the other health professions? And I can see how some of what we do is not affecting that. And it, it doesn't mean because you're woman or non, um, you know, from the ethnic group or anything. It is the field of geriatrics and gerontology that has not yet got its place in society like pediatrics has. Mm -hmm. And we have to do more to advocate for that. My mom has mild dementia. My husband is looking after her. And so we have this commuting relationship. I go home 
to my family on the weekends. <laughs> so I lived during the week in a different city, different country than my mother and my husband. But again, it's a caregiving role that most women automatically seem to be assigned, whether it's spoken or unspoken, we're doing it. Whether we're uh, acknowledged for it or not, we feel as women that this is our place, we need to do it. And so that's part of where our field is taking us, even though we keep on saying it's bigger than just women, it comes down to being women. The Wiggle Project focuses on the legacies of older women gerontologists. Within that framework, is there anything else you would like for us to know? I think as a women advocates, we need to be doing more. We need to be doing more to show our gray hair. We need to be showing the wrinkles in our face, whether it's in the Dove commercial or in any other project out there. We need to be um, maximizing those opportunities to show women are contributing to the field of aging. They're contributing to be uh, excellent role models for the younger generation. And we need to show that children accept us as women, as aged, as older persons um, with open arms. We tend to forget that we have a lot to offer. We're always trying to help somebody else. We're not doing enough for ourselves.